Next, I want to talk a little bit more about monitoring footage and different ways you can do that. The uh, a way I taught in the original lesson was to double click a clip and it'll open up in your source window and then in here you can set an endpoint and an out point and drag that onto your timeline. Uh, that's not the only way you can do that. It's the way I prefer, it's the way I think is easiest, but you know there are always several ways to do things in Premiere. So if I switch from list view into icon view and pull up all my icons, I can actually perform that same in and out function that I would do in the source window from inside of my project window. So most of you have already found that if you bring your cursor over clip and scrub, it will scrub that clip depending on where the mouse is. If I click on that clip, I can use all the same controls I was using in my source window to play and fast forward and create an in point and an out point. So if this clip is selected and I hit play, it'll play that clip through audio and all. If I hit space again, it'll pause. I can also use J, K, and L to fast forward and rewind in this uh, window. So I'm just going to increase my zoom here a little bit to make it a little bit easier to see this clip. And then I can actually come in here right before his hand comes in, create an endpoint with I, and you can see it's now only the part after the endpoint is blue. Fast forward, he pulls the crackers out, and I can hit O, and now I've created an endpoint and an outpoint in my project window. And when I drag that onto the timeline, it will only be that part of the clip that I created the in and out point around. Okay, so, so if you prefer to do that in your project window, you can do it in the project window. If you prefer to do it in the source window, you can do it in the source window. Personally, I like the source window a little bit more. It gives me a little bit more control, but uh, uh, to each their own. Now to go a little bit deeper into the source window with a couple of other options that I haven't shown you yet. One cool thing you can do in the source window is if you click on the hamburger menu for the source window, every window in Premiere has a hamburger menu. It always has different options in it. If I click the one for the source, it'll actually give me a history of what I've opened in the program window, or I can open up a bunch of clips in the program window by just highlighting and you know, saying open in source monitor. Sorry, source monitor, not program window. Um, and then it's now opened up all these things in my source monitor, and I can just see a history of what I've opened. So if you are working with a ton of clips and you can't recall what that clip that you were on was, um, you know, open up the hamburger menu, and it'll it'll give you a little history. Something else I want to review in the source window is the zoom function. This little drop down menu you see here, I think I talked about it in terms of the program window earlier. Um, when you change the zoom down here, so if I click on 12%, it'll make it smaller. It's not actually affecting the zoom of the video itself, it's just how you're previewing it. Um, for the most part, you're going to want to keep it on fit because that'll give you the largest image size without cutting anything off. I can also adjust a different type of zoom with the scroll bar down here at the bottom. This one works a lot more like the timeline does. So if I click on this, it'll shorten or lengthen out the size of what a, f a frame is. By default, it's zoomed all the way out, which means end to end here with, with my playhead is the whole clip. If, if I zoom that in, this little blue line is the size of a frame. So now if I go frame by frame, you can see how it only advances a, a, a little bit. And as I scroll through through the clip, it actually scrolls my a bar at the bottom there. Again, usually keep it zoomed all the way out. You know, it's, it's nice that this entire area is the size of the clip as a whole, but it's good functionality to know exists. One other thing I want to review is the playback resolution option over here on the right. What this does again is it will actually change the playback re resolution of the clip. For the most part, if a clip is is uh, 1080p, it'll play perfectly fine on these computers or a f on most computers uh, for that matter. Uh, but if you are working in 4K or, or higher resolutions or if your computer is struggling to play a clip back, um, it, it could be helpful to change this to half or even a, qu a quarter quality. And you'll actually see when I hit play that 
it doesn't quite look as good as when it's paused. Most often I, I get complaints that, oh, I'm playing my clip and it just looks terrible, uh, but I pause it and it looks okay. Uh, that's because of your playback resol resolution here um, is not at full. There are also a couple of other options to take a look at under the uh, wrench menu here. Uh, this has tons and tons of stuff. Uh, one thing I want you to get in the habit of looking at though is our safe margins. If I click on safe margins, it'll pop up these little bar, these little lines around the clip. What these lines mean, so this line around the outside, that's called action safe. And what that means is anything that's happening inside of this box is almost guaranteed to happen on screens. So any action that is happening in your frame should be inside of this box, it shouldn't be on the outside. If you have action happening over here on the edge of, of your screen all the way around, there's not a guarantee that it is going to show up on every single kind of screen that your film could uh, play back on. So maybe if a TV is set incorrectly or it's playing on an old CRT uh, bubble television or if uh, a projector and screen aren't exactly set up correctly, the things that happen on the outside of your frame, just on the edge, have a chance of being cut off. So in production, when you're shooting, uh, be conscious of that and you make sure you're not placing important action uh, all the way over on the edge here. It should be inside the action safe box. The box on the inside is the title safe. So title safe, uh, basically the exact same thing, but for titles, make sure you're placing titles on the inside of this box. It can be on the edge of this box, but if you put titles outside this box or all the way on the edge, again, there is a chance that they could get cut off. And for titles especially, it's super important that they aren't being cut off by whatever media it's being played back on. If you see a video where this is ignored and you see titles on the very edge or something, that's because it's being played in the YouTube player or somewhere online and anywhere online, it's not going to cut off your video. Um, but it really gets to be important when you start submitting films to film festivals or you're making something for television that now you don't have as much control over where the media is being played back. So make sure any titles or action are happening correctly in these boxes to make sure that important things in your film aren't being cut off. Down here in the corner of our screen, we have this uh, button called Button Editor. And if you open that up, you actually have the ability to change all these buttons that you see on the bottom of Premiere. And we've already talked about these. Uh, but a couple of them may not be that uh, useful to you, or maybe there's a new button that you would, would like to add that is more useful. If I cl click on the button editor, it'll give me a whole bunch of other options. So, so I can actually find that safe margins button and dra drag that into my menu and place that as part of this. So instead of having to go into my menu here and click on the button that says safe margins, I can just come down here and it becomes a toggle. Something else in here that some people will could find useful is this loop button. So I'm just going to bring that down here. And what that does is if this is selected, when a clip reaches the end, it'll just start back over and continue looping. Some people prefer to edit like this. Uh, personally, I keep it off. I, I, I don't really like that it loops unless you're, you know, projecting a graphic or something that just has to loop on repeat. But um, uh, go ahead and scroll through these. If you bring your mouse and hover over them, it'll tell you what they do. But uh, loop and safe margins, I think, are the two most useful ones. That'll do it for this lesson. Now you can go ahead and take quiz one that is linked in Haiku.